So, welcome to this 13th lecture. Um, here, as I was uh, saying in my last lecture, that I can get my wish list as we have prepared for this power division and combiner, all can be satisfied if I introduce one more port, four port. Till now, we are seeing the minimum. So, if you have minimum ports, you cannot have all the wish list satisfied, but if I go to four port, so four port microwave power divider combiner, I can satisfy that. And finally, we will see that uh, the uh, when I satisfy everything, uh, that means I can do anything that is called magic. So, uh, that magic device will be called magic T will have T capital T not T E T, but then it will be both I can use it as power divider, I can use it as power combiner, it will be lossless, it will be matched, it will be reciprocal. So, that device is magic T, once we get that we will know that okay, power divider combiner I do not have any problem. But always you know we do not have our um, that best device at hand. So, then we go and do with other things which are there. So, directional coupler. Um, so, let us switch over to four port and first uh, we will call a device a very important device is directional coupler. Um, it is four port, it is again we see that our that wish list lossless matched at all ports made of passive isotropic material reciprocal. So, in four port we are placing that wish list, let us see what happens to our scattering matrix, whether we can fabricate that and if fabricate various fabrication one of that is directional coupler, which one till now I have not said, but we will see the development one by one, one of that is directional coupler. So, let us see this is a directional coupler all of you are familiar with in your microwave labs that this is directional coupler. You see it has four ports, but generally in labs etcetera many times we use only three ports, this four port is there in const it is constructed, but it is not accessed from outside. So, this is a typical directional coupler. Now, from our let us start building our S matrix of a four port wish list device. So, S if I match at all ports, I can write these diagonal elements S 1 1 to S 4 4 they are all 0. I do not know others that is why I am given dot. Now, it is reciprocal this four port device that should be reciprocal. So, invoke reciprocity. So, S matrix is symmetric. So, now I give the nomenclature this. So, you see how many unknowns now I have one is S 2 1 then S 3 1 then S 4 1 then S 3 2, then S 4 2, S 4 2 and then they are already over S 3 4. So, 6 unknowns are there. So, I need to solve these 6 unknowns to determine the S matrix completely. Now, let us directional coupler we want to be lossless. So, apply unitary property I have said. So, you will have to do it yourself because these mathematics things teaching is difficult. You will have to do then only one understand otherwise everything. So, by this you form some equation then again by that you some more equation. Now, one solution of that is as I said this. So, this 
So, this 2 becomes 0. So, for that solution. So, this is the how many unknowns now? I have reduced two of those unknowns. So, this four complex unknowns. Now, unitary property again invoked. So, in terms of that you see I have got these equations, but I have got six real unknowns. Due to this actually one is reducing that is why now you have six real unknowns. So, let us fix the unknowns that S 2 1 let us call alpha and we also take the phase reference of alpha to be 0. So, it is alpha. Now, S 2 1 and S 3 4 they are not connected that is why I can take this unknown also let us take value a alpha. So, that it becomes minimized. Now, S 3 1 is some other thing because S 2 1. So, that means, the, I am giving power to port 1 the amount uh, the voltage that is developed as 2 is alpha, voltage that is developed as 3 is beta. Similarly, this is S 4 2 means actually S 2 4 also. So, S 3 4 is alpha that means, power I am giving at port 3. So, power will be also going to port 2 that we are calling beta and in this. So, alpha beta real and theta and phi are two angles which will be determined from unitary property. So, you see that I have reduced that those 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 unknowns they are now expressed in terms of 2 real quantity 2 and 2, 4. So, 4 unknowns, 4 real quantities we will have to solve them. Now, by unitary property I have said. So, you finally, come to this conclusion that theta plus phi they should be equal to pi. Theta and phi the two unknowns theta and phi they should be having this relation they should satisfy to satisfy unitary property. Now, there are two oh, this is this is symmetrical coupler. Now, there are two ways by which I can satisfy this either I take theta and phi both to be equal that choice is called symmetrical coupler. So, both theta and phi they are equal to pi by 2 this is called symmetrical coupler and otherwise I can take theta as 0 pi is pi that is called anti symmetrical coupler. So, a directional coupler it is S matrix or that that 4 port device that we are developing that is like this. Now, theta and phi that choice I said. So, based on that this will be either called an symmetrical device or anti symmetrical device. Symmetrical means theta is pi by 2, phi is pi by 2, theta phi pi by 2 and anti symmetrical device means theta 0. So, these two are 0 theta and this is theta and phi is pi. Now, both of these um, choice that is called a directional coupler. Now, symbol of a directional coupler is like this both this uh, symbols are used you see what we say that if you give in power to 1 the power will go to 2 and 3 power on go to 4. So, this is called input port this is through port this is coupled port this is isolated port. The same thing also some people like this terminology as the symbol that from input port you are going to couple port, but main power is going here. Similarly, here 
this is coupled, but main power is given here. So, this is the symbol, I think you should be knowing this symbol very well and also the directional couplers are coupled by two, um, they are characterized by two parameters. The one of them is called coupling, it is the coupling is equal to the ratio of power P 1 by P 3. So, now coupling power we require that basically y directional coupler is required, why at all I need to couple power. Suppose, some power is flowing in a line between transmitter and receiver. Now, without disturbing this whole thing, I want to sense that or I want to measure how much power is flowing. So, for that what is done basically in all microwave things, you know that if you open anything and see to measure the power, actually you are disturbing the whole thing, the power mechanism by which it is flowing it will be disturbed or you will be exposed to a very high field if you want to go somewhere and measure power. But if you put a directional coupler, so the maximum power will go to the through port, but in the coupled port a fraction known fraction of power is coming. So, you can put your device and measure. So, you know that fraction by that you can say in the main line how much power is going that is the concept of coupler, power coupler. Now, couplers also need a directivity that means, when I am giving power the I require that in the coupled port there should be power some power going obviously, in through port the power is going that is the main thing, but at the port where I will be sensing or measuring that port I will the coupling power. So, P 3 should be there and I also demand basically this is uh, that in the um, isolated port that means, other port should not be disturbed. So, port 4 should be isolated from this power ratio. So, power is going to port 2, power is will be coupled to port 3, no power should be coming to P port. But how much I am coupling and how much I am giving to P port that is expressed by a ratio directivity. You see also I have another parameter that is isolation. I am coming back to directivity because the name of this coupler could have been without directional coupler, but directional coupler is there for because it had some directivity. So, I will come back there, but before that I define isolation. What is isolation? Obviously, I want as I was saying that isolation we want to be infinite. That means, when I am giving some power to P 1, I require that I should not have any power coming to port 4. So, this ratio, but in real life you do not have that. So, there will be some power coming. So, I measure that isolation if it is less, I say no, it is very bad. Like in um, all those uh, power dividers we have measured, that time we said 4. 4 means it is uh, half is. Um, so, 4 is not a very high value, we require infinite isolation, but 4 we said no that means, 1 fourth of the power you are coming to that uh, isolated port. So, that now power, so it is a power ratio in terms of S parameters, you can say it is 20 log because S parameter is a voltage ratio and insertion loss you know that how much power is getting lost, because my actual m is p 1 power I am giving p, p 2 should get that, but uh, due to this whole coupler which job is to sense the power etcetera, it is taking some power. So, how much is that? That is called insertion loss p 1 by p 2 and in terms of s parameter I can write like this, basically whatever we have assumed there. So, from alpha knowledge you can say this, remember this 10, 20 explanations you understand you yourself satisfy that all, always remember that whenever there is a power ratio that should be 10, but whenever there is a voltage or current ratio 
that should be 20. So, you see the moment I switch over S parameters generally are the voltage ratios that in micro frequency that is voltage waves ratio the uh, reflected wave by A, but that is voltage or current not power that is why 20 log. Now, let me uh, go to what is the concept of directivity. You see what I want, I want that ok, obviously I want this port isolated. So, isolation uh, checking is not the part of directivity. Now, directivity means I want that ok, it is a reciprocal device. So, if I give power here, the power will be going to 2, power will be going to 3. Now, similarly, if I give power here, then that power will go to where? It will go to port 4 and it will be coupled to port 1 and it will be isolated to port 3. So, reciprocal device means if the power instead of giving at port 1, if I give to port 2, the power should go to port 4 as well as port 1. Main through power will come here, couple power will be coming here and the this one will be isolated. But I want to put a direction sense here, because my main thing is I, I am interested about that if some power comes from here, how it can come? If this port 2 is not matched, then there will be some reflected power. Now, that reflected power will come where? That reflected power will come to this P 4, uh, this port 4. I want from this coupler an additional constant apart from coupling and power division etcetera, I want that you suppress this part, because this reflected power is unwanted. So, if there is by chance any mismatch in the load side of this port 2, because that is not in my hand, that power will come. Now, do not treat my forward power like that reflected power. So, you suppress that, that is why directional couplers, they are made from reciprocal device, but due to their proper design this power that is coming back from there that gets suppressed. Directivity is a measure of that parameter. So, you see that is why what it is measuring P 3 that means, in the forward path the P 3 is going. Now, ideally I so the P 4 is not getting that, but then if there is any mismatch in the through port then that will come to port 4. So, how much it is coming there? I want this ratio to be very high also. So, that the P 4 is suppressed with respect to P 3, both are the through powers, but one is due to reflection, another is due to my intention. So, I want to boost my power, that is why the coupled power which is coming to P 3 that should be coming to that should be much higher than P 4. That is why directivity of a directional coupler also I want to be high. Now, this is expressed in terms of P 3 means basically S 3 1, P 4 means S 1 4, but we call it uh, due to symmetry S 4 1 actually it should be S 1 4. So, if you do that in terms of that beta things, it is this ratio. And then, if you just see those S parameter ratio, and since this is lossless device, you can easily prove this that I is equal to d by C. But remember, this is in terms of dB, otherwise, the relation will be a multiplicative relation. So, I is equal to d by C, provided I, D, and C are expressed not in absolute scale, but in dB. Now, directivity measures coupler's ability to separate forward and backward waves, that reflected wave is backward wave. So, high directivity means it will be able to do. The moment it does, 
So, ideal directional coupler I should have isolation is high, but also it should distinguish the D and uh, the forward wave and reflected wave. So, again I am repeating this is an important concept of directional coupler that when I am giving power to this, power is going here for sensing I am taking that power to 3, I do not want power should come here and in reality very small letter isolation is quite high 120, 140 dB isolation can you can make in web guide. Now, when this in the through port there is maximum power is going here 99 percent or more than that also I want here. Now, here there can be some mismatch. So, that power will be coming and the moment that power coming, so where that power will come that main power will go to input port, but I want that it should be uh, this two port. So, it will be coupled to this port also. Now, I want that the device should be such that this part should be isolated. So, how to measure that? That measurement I say that this P 3 whatever is getting coupled here and compared to that whatever is coupled here that should be suppressed. So, that is why I demand that P 3 should be much higher than P 4. So, this is the ideal directional coupler. Now, we have seen in case of impedance measurement etcetera how to do that. Also, you should always know how to characterize any directional coupler. The characterization means you find out those four parameters of directional coupler that is your uh, the coupling, because if you do not know coupling you will not be able to say the how much power is going in the main circuit. Also, you should be able to find out how much is the isolation, so that in the isolated ports how much you are disturbing your neighbors. Then also you have a directivity that forward path of power that should be uh, undisturbed or that should be go on, eh? but reflected power should be suppressed. Now, but with the uh, with the invention of this uh, directional coupler, we got another thing that incident wave you see separation incident waves can be separated, because in general in any structure the incident wave and reflected wave they are together, but sometimes suppose I want to measure the S parameters that time I want to separate them. So, how to separate that? That device is again you see the in uh, directional coupler. So, I have made it you will understand that V 1 is here. So, as I was saying the main power is coming here, some coupled power is coming here, coupled power we are calling beta V 1 plus and this one the V 2 is coming here. So, but then if there is any reflection that V 2 is going here and from that whatever the V 2 is coming that that we are calling V 2 minus. So, now reflected wave goes to port 4 as I said it is isolated from port 1 incident and reflected wave in main 9 get separated at port 3 and 4. You see incident wave that goes here and reflected wave that goes here. So, if you sense in how what is the value of P 3 or what is the um, sorry not power, what is the voltage at P 3 um, at port 3, you get incident wave, you know beta. So, you can only calculate. Similarly, the coupling is same. So, what is V 2 minus? So, beta V 2 minus you sense here and so that means, this whatever you give a signal here just here you can get that how much of it consists of V 1 plus and how much of V 2 plus. Now, this is useful because when directional coupler came in microwave network, people invented the S parameter measuring device that is the network analyzer. Network analyzer we saw in earlier NPTEL lecture, but 
the basis of that is network analysis that this is the due to its directional nature the directional coupler can separate the incident and reflected wave as is shown here. And so, this is the basis of scattering parameter measurement by network analyzer. Basically, network analyzers whenever they give some power, they put a directional coupler there and by that easily by seeing it is port 3 and port 4, they can um, extract what is the value of that uh, incident wave and reflected wave. Now, if this coupling ratio is made 3 dB, so coupling ratio what is coupling the P 3 P 1 by P 3 that if you make 2. So, that coupler is called a hybrid coupler. So, the moment you have that you get the value of beta and alpha also you take as 1 by root 2. So, that means you are dictating those alpha and beta values and that anti-symmetric directional coupler you see magic T that anti-symmetric that means theta 0 this choice we have seen anti-symmetric directional coupler hybrid coupler means alpha beta is equal to 1 by root 2. So, S parameter of this device is this and this was our magic T. Basically, it is a combination of we have seen E plane T and H plane T. If you combine that in a 4 port device, so 1, 2 port you have 3. So, you have 3 port as an E plane T and 4 port is the H plane T. So, in a main line you take one E plane junction, you make one H plane junction, you call them 3 and 4 ports and the phase references already is there you see we have seen that E plane T has a uh, phase in between the port 1 and port 2 signals there is a difference of phase of uh, pi. And in case of H plane T they are similar phase. So, that is why the phase choice is theta is equal to 0 and phi is equal to pi and both E plane and H plane T are alpha beta they are same as 1 by root 2 they are 3 dB um, I think. So, basically all that we are combining in a magic T and it is S parameter we will take this form with this choice. So, we have chosen alpha beta theta phi those 4 unknowns if we choose in this fashion you get a magic T. So, you see with this structure how it does power division signal applied at port 1. So, that means I will have to look at this signal applied as port 1 you see port 2 and 3 are getting equal signals. So, evenly split into 2 in phase between second and third ports and fourth port you see isolated. Signal applied at port 4, it is evenly split into two opposite phase signals between second and three and port 1 isolated. So, this is a power divider and power wise you see that power wise also you are having half of the power. So, when I am exciting at port 1, I am getting half power in port 2, half power in port 3. Similarly, if I give it in port 4, I am giving getting half power here, half power here. So, power divider magic T will do. Now, let us see this power combiner, suppose signal applied at 2 and 3. So, look at this column 2, look at this column 3. Now, what happens to port 1? Port 1 is I am giving signal applied to port 2. Let us see port 1 is getting 1 by root 2, signal applied to 3 port 1 is getting 1 by root 2. What is the total sum? 2 by root 2, so 2. So, port 1 
in terms of voltage it is sum of the two signals, in terms of power also it is twice the power. So, port 1 getting sum. What is happening to port 4? You see it, I am giving here 2. So, signal is I will look at this column, what is at port 4? Minus 1 by root 2, what is at I am giving signal at port 3, what is here? Plus 1 by root 2 total signal 0. So, port 4 is difference. So, now I can say that the if I give input at 2 and 3, these are the two input ports of this 4 port device, port 1 is a summer, port 4 is a subtractor. So, this is called power combiner. Now, this is very important of a very modern radar. Modern radar has a thing called mono pulse comparator. Suppose I send one pulse and I want to sense the angle or exact location of an object. What they do? One signal is sent and from the reflection I take that in, uh, in the um, I because actually two, uh, two um, one signal is sent, but uh, actually two beams. So, from the two different positions two offset beams are sent and from that two reflection comes one is in azimuth plane, two in, in the uh, elevation plane and then they make sum and difference. So, they put a magic T that will give you sum signal and difference signal and that sum and difference if we process by signal processing with an accuracy up to order of 1 by 100 or 1 by 1000 of a degree, I can say what is the position. So, without this magic T that is not possible. So, sum and difference signal, two signals if you send, two beams of you send two signals, they are sum and difference can be obtained from this magic T in the power combiner mode. So, you see this is whatever we have discussed 2, 3. So, 4 is the sum, uh, 4 is the difference and 1 is the sum. So, this is an this is an waveguide version, this is an planar circuit version, you just need to all are there are 4 ports all are characteristic impedance same, the 3 of them are having a path length difference of lambda by 4, 1 of them having 3 by 4, you can easily find out that if you give powers at this 2 and 3, then 1 will act as a sum and 4 as a difference. This is an magic T waveguide we have used from our student days to our teaching days, we all use this device. Really, now we consider it is not a magic, but first time when you come across it, it is really a magic. You see this same device is a divider, same device is a combiner, same device can be giving you the sum and difference etcetera. So, it is really good that if you understand this passive device, then power division is not a problem for you. Thank you.